Hello and welcome back to the channel. On today's video we've got something quite interesting I think you might find. This is a Reftec 934. Now uh, the clue might be in the name there for some of you and uh, some of you it might not be. This is a 934 meg CB radio uh, which uh, became legal at the same time as the, uh, the 27 megahertz radio sets and was phased out by the government uh, in the late 80s I believe, early 90s when uh, the mobile phone companies came uh, begging for that particular part of the radio spectrum and so these then became persona non grata at that point and uh, are now not legally allowed to be used however um, some of you may not might not realize the fact that there, there are small nets uh, still about on the 934 meg and there are people that still do use the frequency and um, which surprised me as well so um, we're going to uh, take this radio apart the person that supplied it is a, a regular viewer of mine and uh, he does use this radio so we're going to take it apart and just run it through some checks and try and align it i couldn't find any um, circuit diagrams or any information about this whatsoever so i'm going to have to try and uh, and adjust it and see and um, we'll take some measurements and see what it's doing now Whilst at the same time I'm going, I am going to tune this up and look at it, I won't condone the use of 934 MHz radios, obviously, because they're not legal to use in the UK, but I can't stop anyone else from doing it. But it's nonetheless part of CB history, and it's something I think you might find interesting. I certainly do. So let's have a look at this RefTech 934. Right, it's a super interesting uh, circuit here. Um, I'm not sure quite what I'm going to be able to do with this. The, uh, the power amplifier section there is uh, is fairly rudimentary and simple with some little offset trimmer capacitors there um, biggest problem I've got in terms of power I haven't got a meter that goes up as high as 934 <laughs> so I'd have to do it on field strength if I was peaking this um, for transmit and obviously on receive um, I can generate those signals with the signal generator but um, there's something on the circuit board I've noticed straight away. When I opened the case up, there was um, a piece of wire that fell out. Now, I don't know if this was a link on the board or something, but I've noticed down here on the on the PCB, there's actually a break in the track there. You see that break there? It's soldered this side, but not that side. Now, to me, that looks like it should be joined, but I say I have no circuit diagram, so this could be a bit of a problem. So let's... Um, Let's power it up first. That was the other thing that they've, the customers asked me to supply a power lead. Now, if you look at the, the power socket, you might recognise that if you've got a NI440DX. That's exactly the same power socket that's on the NI440DX. This, there's a, the proper plug there. And um, that does fit in the back of the socket. So we do, we can supply the power lead but um, before I do anything I want to see what works and what doesn't work um, because I'm not sure how much of this I can really um, tune up but I'll be interested to see if it um, if it's still receiving okay and if it still transmits I mean I think they said there was an intermittent fault with it uh, I've got the paperwork somewhere um, but um, I shall have a look I've also noticed um, a broken track, a lifted track. I don't know if you can, if I can get it to focus just there. You see that moving? Uh, if I can get a better shot there. There we go. I think it's focused now. You can see that that track has lifted there. So I think what I'll probably do as I've got the iron on is I'll, I'll do a repair on that first. I'll leave this one. I'm pretty sure that, that this one does have to bridge that track there. And... It does look quite a, quite a vulnerable little board, this. Um, to do any tune-up, I would need to lift this board to get to the underside. Um, so I'm a bit loath to do that, um, really. This, I'm, uh, you know, th this was sent to me blind. I didn't know I was even receiving this. It was, uh, I'm sending you a radio you might find interesting. Because <laughs> I don't normally, I wouldn't normally do a 934 or AM radios. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, avoid the SSB stuff as well. Just because I'm not set up for, for, for testing and, and that. I have done some uh, multi-mode rigs in the past, but they're, they're so time consuming, like the Ham International Concord 2s and the, the SS, is it the 3000, uh, 3900? Um, I've done those, but they, they just take ages. And um, 
yeah I haven't got really the time so anyway let's do that little repair on there first before we power it on it's quite a fascinating little bit of kit really the um, we've got it upside down here but you'll, I can flip the video over which will be weird but uh, the squelch works back to front you see I'm turning it up and then it's so the squelch works back to front which is the first thing I spotted uh, we seem to have plenty of volume um, on there so I'm assuming the capacitors are not too bad uh, but you'll see when we start to flip through the channels that the look at all that we've got <laughs> strong signals on all these frequencies now it rolls off just after we get on 12 13 14 so and I guess that's just simply down to this with the lid off this being swamped by local mobile phone signals now we're not uh, hearing anything noise wise if you see not hearing anything in particular but it's uh, it's certainly knocking it knocking it out so but anyway let's see if we can um, generate a tone from the sig gen I'm, I'm connecting a bnc lead straight from the sig gen into the back of the radio very short lead to minimize the losses so let's just see what if we can hear anything we're going to pop it onto channel 20 uh, just a channel uh, 20 channel allocation for this band but uh, it's very bright um displaying it i have to say so um let's um let's just get the frequency list and see what that is right um it's 934.975 megahertz for channel 20 so we've set the sig gen to that and we've got our 0.1 microvolt signal which we've just switched on so let's lower the squelch see if what we can hear uh, nothing there so let's bring the level up a little bit if we can hear it we'll turn the volume down a little bit so it's not too loud for you guys we we'll turn it down to there we'll start to bring the signal up ah there we go we've got 0.28 of a microvolt so let's um that's pretty decent we can still we can hear it at 0.25 so let's um see what that's doing on the cyanide meter so we're doing um, 2.75 microvolts for 12 dB cyanide, so it's not going to win any awards. I would have to look at the original spec of the radio to see if that was in spec or not. Um, transmit wise, these were good for 8 watts at the time, uh, apparently on paper. Like I said, I've got no way of measuring that. Uh, I couldn't take an accurate reading with my equipment here. Um, but certainly receive is, is there. It's at 2.75 uh, microvolts which um, to give you an idea in you know for a 27 megahertz CB you, you're looking at really anything under one microvolt so it is a bit uh, it is a little bit deaf um, and we're coming straight into the radio from the signal generator with nothing in the way no switches no extra coax or leads so um, yeah it, that could probably definitely be improved now the only problem is without um, without any kind of circuit diagram uh, it's going to be tricky uh, and I, I'm not so sure I want to start adjusting things uh, on this set um, because I could I could end up making it worse and I haven't got the facilities well, on the receive side I have but on the transmit side I haven't got really the facilities to get an accurate reading of the power anyway. Alright so on channel 1 uh, to get 12 dB cyanide it's 36 microvolts um, so that does uh, tell me that there is definitely something wrong there's your uh, your list of frequencies so the the signal that we're seeing on on one and two on one two let's just turn the scratch on the signal we're seeing there i think is is more to do with something inherently wrong with the receiver side now i still think that the that there should be that link on the board um i think it would be okay to link that out see if that um, m makes a change uh, see if that makes a difference because there's clearly something wrong with received there that's not not uh, not not any good at all I mean it was okay on channel 20 but certainly it's way out of balance right I think uh, that this is the receive side of the board under here and on examination I, I can see there's a bad resistor there that's not looking too happy for itself um which i can check and replace um but certainly um 
It's certainly interesting. The synthesizer chip is an MC1451515P. One 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 uh, down there. And I would say that that's your transmit lineup. Like I say, it's really, it, it's it's hard to know without a diagram. Very hard to know indeed. And I can't see that there's much in distress from the top side. Um, and of course you would argue, why would you want to worry about the transmit side anyway? Um, it would be nice if we could get the receive side functioning correctly. Because uh, it's certainly off centre. It is receiving, but it's... Um, it's not uh, receiving across the uh, 20 channels, is it? Very well. So, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that resistor. I'll, I'll desolder that resistor first and see if that makes any difference. There's a resistor. It seems to be bearing a bit of its sole, doesn't it? Let's have a look and put it in the tester. It should be 470 ohms and uh, it appears to be so, but we will put, put a new resistor in there anyway. I've also got a very uh, toasty looking resistor down here in the uh, transmit final stage there. I think that should be a a 22 ohm resistor. Um, and looking at that, that might be the feed resistor for the receive side. Um, I'll attempt to, to test that. I'm not sure if we've got one of that value, but um, it looks like a half watt. It's a 220 ohm resistor and it's still testing out okay. It's obviously got very, very hot and the paint is uh, peeling off of it there. Um, we are getting some signal in, obviously, to the receive board. Um, so I'll try and pry the receive board up a little bit more to see if I can spot if there's anything else that looks distressed. I'm going to go and guess that the RefTech T5 reference there is for the transmit board. And on this board we have a RefTech R5. So I think this is definitely the receive and the output audio board. Well, I know it's the output audio board um, because I can see the wires going to the jack there from this board. So, um, yeah, I think we could safely safely uh, say that that's the receive side. But again, without a circuit diagram, it uh, I could make this a lot worse than better <laughs> because I don't know what I'm adjusting until I'm adjusting it. All right, so we've got the receive a bit better. Uh, with a bit of alignment down to 1.6 microvolts it's still offset on channel one it's not so great i don't know why that is it looks like there's some kind of little aftermarket pre-amplifier board in there as well so uh, but it is nonetheless receiving i'm going to try uh, and see what transmit is doing now this should be entertaining the mvt 7100 scanner on frequency channel 20. now originally it was when i first tried it it was coming out of the Patero. And it is transmitting, we can see from the power supply. We can see the current jumping up there. And when I get it onto the uh, scanner, you can see on the SDR, you can see it's actually jumped up frequency. Now I'm, I'm beginning to wonder whether there might be a problem with the encoder, with this encoder and, and the signals going into the synthesizer chip here. Um, Give that a spin back and let's try that again. Uh, it's still it's still a mile off, see? It's still not a frequency, but it was on frequency before. So um, the transmit board is below there. Like I say, I don't know what uh, what aligns it on frequency. I could just check uh, the synthesizer chip to see if we're getting the correct logic in to the chip there, because that could be why receive isn't working correctly as well uh, i.e. that it's you know that, that it's slightly off off frequency because the encoder isn't isn't uh, isn't isn't putting the, the correct binary sequence into the chip i have to get the data sheet for the chip and have a look and see what pins do what i've got the synthesizer sheet down so we can have a look at that but it is actually on frequency again now on channel 20 one two one two one two there we go you can see the modulation on the uh, see the modulation on the screen there at the top right one two so yeah that is actually transmitting i mean how legal that is even into a dummy load who knows yeah exactly so but as you can see there you know on the screen i mean i've not got much of an antenna into this 
but that frequency you don't need a great deal. And there is something there, look, just up from it on the band. So it could be something, of course, in here, like a Wi Fi uh, device of some kind, but um, that's why you shouldn't really transmit, or <laughs> well, you definitely shouldn't transmit on this frequency. So, yes, it is transmitting, and looking at the the uh, current meter, I'd say it's, it's doing okay in terms of power. It's not getting warm, but um, so yeah, I'd say there might be a bit of an intermittent um, selector issue here, or might be a bit of a dry joint on the back of the synthesizer chip. I might just run the soldering iron over that tomorrow. That's enough for today. Um, but yeah, what an interesting little set. Never ever had my hands on one. I can kind of see why it didn't take off. Uh, they're a little bit more tricky, but um, apparently they did work very, very well back in the day. And um, I mean, back in the day, this this is my original Jupiteru scanner, which I've had since 1990. And um, when I used to turn this on, it wasn't CBs I could hear back then. It was uh, analog um, cellular telephones, which was a lot of fun. I heard a lot of uh, a lot of conversations through that. Let's just say <laughs> some of them. Yeah, well, less said about the better, I think. Uh, all I can say is that when people are having affairs, very often they'll speak to the person they're having their affair with when they're walking the dog. So just bear that in mind, guys. Right, um, okay, yes. Let's put it to bed. Uh, it's a Sunday night, and it's Monday tomorrow, and I think there's a funeral on. I don't know who it is, though. All right, so I've repaired the resistor. Um, now, the squelch. Somebody has had this... Uh, either put a new pot in or something but that's working back to front so we're going to swap that round so it works correctly and then really uh, the other thing that you'd ask for is for this thermal paste to be scraped off and some fresh paste put on which we can do because uh, it does actually um, contact with the outside of the case the the heat sink actually it's it as you can see there it touches the case so it uh, wicks away some of the heat from there um, and then we'll make a power lead up for it and case it up and uh, send it back. It's interesting though, uh, really interesting. Right, we've done the uh, the paste, we've got the squelch working in the proper direction now, so I've just reversed those connections. Give it a little service, clean the pots, that sort of thing. Clean the BNC connector at the back, that was a bit tarnished. And um, yeah, we'll just run a signal through it. And uh, like I say, it does transmit on all of the channels. I've already tested that out. There is this issue with the signal meter, which I've read about online. Uh, which can develop with this set, so that's a bit of an issue, but um, it's transmitting and receiving and you know, there's not much more else I can do with it, unfortunately. So the customer sent this through as a sort of surprise repair. <laughs> I had no idea it was coming because I wouldn't normally uh, I'd normally agree to doing a 934 meg set because I'm just not geared up for really testing them thoroughly and aligning them properly. There you go, we're listening to point two of a microvolt. Uh, on channel 20 there, so not too shabby at all. And um, perhaps just listen to see what, what we're doing on the cyanide meter. There we go, and transmit. One, two, one, two. There we go. Transmit's working as well. And uh, yeah, that's all we can uh, really do with this. Now, I'll make him up um, a power lead. This is exactly the same power lead as the, as the NI440DX. So I'll make him up a power lead and uh, we'll pop it back in the box. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I certainly have. I've not seen a 934 Meg CB before. This is my first one, and um, certainly, uh, you know, very interesting uh, part of the history of the radios of CB radio. Uh, and like I say, obviously, you know, as far as transmitting goes, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you should definitely shouldn't do it. I've, I've, no I've uh, noticed on the um, on the SDR here that the um, you know, there's lots of signals nearby and you can uh, really cause problems but um, it's still nonetheless okay to receive with this and uh, but really what you're going to hear uh, probably not that much <laughs> but you know a few years back you may well have done um, so okay uh, if you have been thanks ever so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one